I have a friend who played in the NFL and now works in the NFL, and he has personally experienced the pressures of, of conforming in that environment. But he rose above it and kept his faith strong. So I went up to the NFL offices to talk to my friend Troy Vincent and get his perspective on manhood and discipleship. And then, you know, this is, this is viewed by many as the epicenter of manhood. I mean, to either play in the NFL or to piggyback off of folk who are playing in the NFL by buying a jersey. So that, that's like viewed as the epicenter of manhood. How, how do you see that being reflected just as you relate to people who think about football, particularly so, men? I would say when you think about what the perception because that is a perception. That's a perception. It's a perception that it's the ultimate masculine. It defines what masculinity is, and I think that's totally untrue. No, no, no facts to that at all. I, who's defining what that is? And is masculinity muscle? Is it physical? Well, is it physical being? No, that's that's not how Christ defined masculinity, but. When you see people tackling that represents one of these jerseys, the big hits, the tackles, the catches, the throws, they call them the man caves. I mean, think about that and in, 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 in really, con in, you know, conceptually, is that really what masculinity is? So are you implying that men are believing a lie? <laughs> I believe so. Or they're buying into okay. what is a perception or potentially a lie. What happened to reaching back to take care of another and allowing these young men to just go off in the wilderness and and accept mediocrity? Life's about focus, life's about structure, and life's about accountability. It's our responsibility to go back and mentor. We're all responsible. Uh, God has been the father to the fatherless. We have to be fathers to the fatherless.